This video is about economies and diseconomies of scale, which cover the benefits and problems associated with the growth of individual firms or entire industries. So when scale of production increases, it's a really, really common phenomenon that average costs or the cost per unit of output produced come down. And that is what we refer to as economies of scale. There are a huge number of reasons for this, which we are going to look at uh, throughout this video. Equally, you might have a situation where, where businesses or industries get so big that um, the increase in scale of production starts to actually lead to an increase in average cost or an increase in the cost per unit of output produced. And that is called diseconomies of scale. And so these things happen on an internal level, probably more commonly that they are internal. And that is when individual firms grow in size, increase in size. They can experience internal economies or internal diseconomies of scale. But at the same time, you might also have external economies or external diseconomies of scale, which happen because of the growth of an entire industry. So let's look at the reasons for each of those different types of economies and diseconomies of scale in turn then. So starting with your internal economies of scale being when an individual firm grows and the benefits they get in terms of the lower average cost because of that, there are quite a few reasons why that might happen. So they could benefit from what we call purchasing economies of scale, which are discounts from buying in bulk. So these happen all the time even on really really quite a small scale so if you buy one can of drink versus if you buy a multi-pack of drink your cost per can is generally much lower when you buy the multi-pack so even individual consumers kind of benefit from that purchasing economies of scale effect equally um, really big businesses can benefit from having much greater bargaining power as well if they're buying uh, their supplies in much much bigger quantities then those suppliers are not going to want to lose out on that business and are more likely to offer better and more discounted deals they might benefit as well from technical economies of scale, which is where they benefit from the use of more advanced production equipment. So production line technology, machines, automation means that those businesses can produce more output in less time, which means that they're more efficient and their cost per unit comes down. Their total cost will be much higher because of the cost of all that equipment. But the cost per unit, because they're producing then on such a large scale, is going to be coming down. They might benefit from managerial economies of scale, uh, which are when we employ more specialist and more efficient and, and specialised managers, which means that they can um, get those efficiency benefits of the, the higher quality and the better trained managers. So if you're just a small business, you might have one person who's in charge of finance, they're in charge of marketing as well, they're in charge of production, all sorts of different elements of the business that they're running. But as a business gets to a larger and larger size, they can employ much more specialised managers to manage each of those different areas that will then be able to get the best out of the business and be able to manage those cost savings much better. It might benefit from financial economies of scale, and that is when larger firms can access cheaper loans and other sources of finance. And that is because lenders will charge a much higher rate of interest on lending, which they perceive to be higher risk. So larger firms are seen as being lower risk because they have less chance of failing, less chance of going bankrupt. So lenders are more likely to give them loans at more favorable rates of interest. And there are a huge range of other economies of scale, internal economies of scale as well. We're going to look at one more here, which is marketing economies of scale. And that is um, ha that happens because marketing is a fixed cost. And the more units of output you produce, the more you're spreading that fixed cost over um, a greater number of units of output. So imagine you're running a burger shop and you're selling 100 burgers a day and you want to put a television advert out there. Well, the cost of that advert is going to be fixed whether you're selling 100 burgers or 1,000 burgers a day. Um, but the cost per burger, your cost per unit, your average cost, which is what we're looking at in terms of the impact of economies of scale, 
is going to be lower per unit, lower per burger if you're producing on a higher scale of output and you're producing those thousand burgers rather than the hundred burgers. So you can see there are loads of reasons why individual firms are going to benefit from falling average costs as they increase in size. But there's also going to be cases where whole industries increase in size and firms benefit from lower average costs because of that as well. So a couple of really clear examples in the UK, I would say, would be uh, the Science Park in Cambridge. Um, and the benefits that all of the different um, science and technology companies have locating there and also uh, Formula One firms and for those Formula One teams which locate quite close to each other in the Midlands and that happens because I would say the main reason is that when you get those kind of quite specialised industries that require quite specialised labour then you can access more easily a good pool of skilled labour in those particular areas. So in Cambridge, there's the universities. Um, if all of the F1 teams locate in the Midlands, then you're going to have quite a high concentration of engineers who want to live and work there um, and work for those Formula One teams. So they can benefit from the access to that skilled labour as those industries grow in those particular areas. They might also benefit from improvements in infrastructure in those areas if the growth of the industry um, brings kind of prosperity to the area and they get more infrastructure investment, better road systems, better rail networks that can then help to reduce their average cost um, because of improved transportation. And then they might also find as that industry grows and gets a bit of a reputation for that area, then suppliers might even start to seek out that area and move towards that area as well, which is then going to make it cheaper for them to um, access those goods from those suppliers as well. Now it's perhaps a bit more difficult to think of why a firm growing in size might start to find that average cost starting to increase, but that is actually relatively common as well. So our internal diseconomies of scale, when we have those individual firms finding average costs starting to rise as they grow. And that might be because of problems with communicating. So if you've got a you know, small firm, two or three people, very very easy to communicate constantly all the time just with you know face-to-face -face meetings and conversations whereas you start to grow then it becomes more difficult to keep that communication flow going once you get to the size of a big multinational company um, then you start to have to introduce uh, travel between you know even different countries and, and international flights in order to have face-to-face -face meetings which are which are going to start to increase your cost per unit because of that. You might find it more difficult to coordinate. So if you've, you've got a relatively small business and you've only got one branch, then you can coordinate that quite easily and quite straightforwardly. Um, but how are you gonna make sure that your strategy, for example, is consistent once you've got four, five, six different branches and you'd have to, to make sure all of that is coordinated. Uh, and then you might also start to find it more difficult to control um, your business and particularly to control and make sure you're motivating effectively your staff and your labor once you get to a larger size. And any of these difficulties, if a business is experiencing difficulties, then it has to find solutions to those difficulties. And that is very likely then to increase costs and increase average costs. And just like you have external economies of scale, you might equally have external diseconomies of scale as well. So that's when our whole industry grows in size um, in a particular area. And that means firms then start to find average costs starting to increase because of that. And that might be because um, you get the growth in the industry and that causes huge amounts of pollution in the area. It might cause lots of traffic congestion. So if you imagine all those um, firms in the science park in Cambridge and all of those workers have got to go to work there. So not very efficient having all of them sitting, all of the workers sitting in traffic for an hour, hour and a half trying to get to work, um, which could increase costs for the firm. And then equally, you might as well have 
a lot of competition for those factors of production. So particularly, again, thinking about that labor side of things, uh, if you've got a number of firms who are all trying to employ the workers in a similar industry, then there's a lot of competition, which then drives up wages, um, which clearly is going to have an impact on firms' average cost if they're having to pay their workers higher wages. Um, and that means average costs start to rise and we get those external diseconomies of scale. So as we often like to do in economics, we can show this relationship between uh, the average cost and scale of production on a diagram. And so what we'd do there is we would have average costs on our y-axis and we would have quantity of output on our x-axis. And then this average cost curve that's in blue would show um, what the shape of the average cost curve would look like for most businesses. And the reason for that is because at very low levels of output, those economies of scale, those benefits of increasing the scale of production in terms of falling average costs are likely to dominate. So these um, or this falling average cost curve shows our economies of scale dominating. But then it's likely that a business would get to a point at some point in its growth where the diseconomies of scale start to take hold and they then start to dominate those economies of scale. And that would then lead to that average cost curve starting to increase. And we're drawing this average cost curve, so this blue average cost curve, we're drawing it for one individual business. And so that means that those economies and diseconomies of scale that I've just described would be internal economies of scale and internal diseconomies of scale. So that movement along that average cost curve is showing the internal economies of scale dominating. This minimum point is called the minimum efficient scale. And then it's showing the, the internal diseconomies of scale dominating as we move towards the very, very high levels of output. And we could also show the external economies and the external diseconomies of scale because I just said that this average cost curve is drawn for the individual business and so with that in mind if that individual business was to experience external economies of scale so benefits in terms of the growth of the entire industry well they haven't changed their individual scale of production but the whole industry has, which has affected their average costs. And in the case of um, external economies of scale, their average costs would be coming down. So their whole average cost curve, or all of these possible quantities of output would shift downwards. And equally, we could have them experiencing external diseconomies of scale, which would mean that the average cost of all of those units of output would be higher. And so that average cost curve would shift upwards to this higher average cost and to this purple line here.